Welcome to That's Good Sports Broncos. I'm Brandon. I have a bit of an announcement. Perna. Broncos fans, diehard Broncos fans, I'm revamping my second YouTube channel, That's Good Broncos. So, if you want a couple episodes every week of Will Keys and I shooting the shit about the Broncos and your weekly Broncos prediction episode, make sure you sub over at That's Good Broncos. I know it's gone through an identity crisis, but we figured our shit out. We are back. And then stay tuned on that channel for an even bigger announcement next week. Think of That's Good Sports as an NFL news channel, where big Broncos news will still be covered, as will the game recaps, and That's Good Broncos as extra Broncos videos for you diehard fanatics. Today, we'll discuss the Broncos releasing of Todd Davis and the team whittling down the roster to the final 53. Wide receiver Juwan Winfrey was a bit of a surprise being released as he was last year's fifth round pick. Outside linebacker Justin Hollins also gone and maybe most shocking was the cut of corner Devontae Bosby or the Boz as I called him. Plus, I finally see why everyone is so hyped about Jerry Judy. Oh, yes, Big Dick Patreon shoutouts for Chris Hammond, David Carpenter, Jean Felipe Leclerc. $20 from Check Out Samurai MW on Twitch, giving away a copy of COD Cold War. Perna needs to be on NFL Network or ESPN Broncos Super Bowl 2020. Is COD Cold War the one where you fight against the fish? Mm -hmm. Scott Megaballs, just ask me my melanated scope on YouTube. Alex, I love big titties delint. Do you, Alex? And the Kurt Crew Fantasy Football Podcast, a podcast with real brothers. Patreon.com slash That's Good Sports. That's how you support this channel. Thank you guys so much for your donations. Check it out if you're interested in giving me your stupid money. Do you, Alex? I know I said this was going to be only about the Broncos, but damn, this is good sports. The Bills, the Buffalo Bills extended elite corner. That's right. I said elite corner, Tredavious White. Uh, Four-year extension, $70 million, including $55 million guaranteed. Great move for the Buffalo Bills. All right, we're finally seeing what all of the Jerry Judy route running hype is about. This was some leaked footage from the Broncos' final scrimmage at Mile High Stadium last night. Damn, how is a corner going to cover Jerry Judy if they think he might be having a seizure at the line of scrimmage? Judy could be the osteoporosis bus driver of the offense. And that is why Alabama is so damn good. They teach the psychology of the game, not just the X's and O's. And the best way to burn an NFL corner is to make him think you're having a medical emergency before the ball is snapped. I love it, Jerry. Now, here is your final Denver Broncos 53-man roster, subject to not be final, depending on which guys they have their eye on with the waiver wire claims, which will then be final on Monday. But quickly looking at this semi-final roster, I thought undrafted running back Levante Bellamy and his mustache had a real chance to make the initial 53. But I guess it's tough to climb out of the shadows of your father when he is indeed Bill Bellamy who famously hosted MTV's Beach House and created the phrase, booty call. Bellamy was a uh, Bronco in college, so I bet he lands back on the Broncos uh, practice squad. Deontay Spencer, AKA God Peed, and Tyree Cleveland round out the, the receiving group for the Broncos. Nice to see Tim Patrick back, and the only real surprise there was Jawan Winfrey leaving, although injuries kind of made that decision for him. Offensive line, don't care. Just three safeties for the Broncos, with Trey Marshall as the reserve, and they have a stacked defensive line, in my opinion, with no real big surprises in that position group. The two most interesting groups were corner and inside linebacker, which I will discuss now. This may be because we have had zero preseason football to watch. 
but I assumed linebacker Todd Davis would be a season-long starter for the Broncos and that corner Devontae Bosby would win the job as the third or slot corner on the defense. Both guys have been released. Uh, I will say making these cuts without any preseason games has to be incredibly difficult and many were surprised because both Bosby and Davis have real game experience. And some guys, you're just basing your decisions with practice. Hopefully though, this means that undrafted corner Isang Bassey is the next Chris Harris Jr. and that Denver actually drafted a good corner in Michael O.J. Mudia. Props to the team for getting something in exchange for Isaac Yadam. Uh, also, my Wichita brethren, Devontae Harris, has had a good camp and played well at times last season. Uh, lots of dudes in the secondary to root for, but it just sucks that Bosby is gone. Now, Todd Davis, the underrated, gritty, and most unjustly criticized player was released Friday. Now this was a huge surprise in Broncos country and a move that will save the team roughly 4 million in cap space. And all they did was risk losing their most seasoned player at the only position group on defense where they have tons of question marks about death. <laughs> Do I trust Vic Fangio and Ed Donatel to coach the hell out of that position? Yes. Nobody in the NFL has made linebackers look better than Fangio. Well, except for maybe Jameis Winston. Do I think this was a good move? Well, if I can quote Gandhi, fuck to the no, it fucking blows. Gandhi. Now this last week, the Broncos added linebackers Mark Barron from Pittsburgh and traded defensive lineman Chris Covington for Austin Calitro from Cincinnati. Like his last name, Mark's talent on the field is becoming Barron and he was the obvious weak link on an otherwise outstanding Steelers defense last season. I have no idea, even if you wanted to play Josie Jewell more, why you would go with Mark Barron over Todd Davis. The silver lining for Austin Calitro is that before the Bengals grabbed him, he was waived by the Yagi Wires, which means he's at least good enough to not help your team tank. Now, Josie Jewell, who Denver drafted out of Iowa two seasons ago, is the expected starter in Todd Davis's place. Which is funny, because for everyone bitching that Davis wasn't great in coverage, you get Josie Jewell, who was in fact worse in coverage than Davis the last two seasons. Now, not to knock Josie Jewell, I like him, and he is like Todd Davis, very solid against the run, but I can't trust a guy whose name simultaneously reminds me of my favorite female artist in Jewel and my least favorite fictional band slash movie in Josie and the Pussycats. It's like pick a lane, Josie, pick a lane. Just pick a lane. Like the Broncos roster moves, you confuse me. I don't like being confused. It's not smart enough for that. Now essentially, the Broncos are banking on three guys to replace the production of one Todd Davis. And I'm not sure any of them are as good as Todd Davis playing next to Alexander Johnson. I was looking forward to that duo. It's like when you order 12 tacos from Taco Bell instead of paying a little bit more for three tacos from your favorite Mexican restaurant. Will they both get you full? Yeah, but one of them's gonna give you diarrhea. And look, I'm not blind. I know Todd Davis wasn't an all-star, but hey now, he got his game on. He was great against the run and led the team in tackles despite missing the first two games last season. Also, stop pretending like you were able to evaluate players like Isang Bassi throughout camp with the zero footage you have to watch him practice and the zero preseason games you got to watch him play. Do I hope he's great? Yes, but none of us know how good he's gonna be. I just witnessed a lot of football experts on Twitter today drawing conclusions from nothing. Or maybe a couple local media tweets telling me why cutting Devontae Bosby was smart. Get out of here. Now, I can say I think the Broncos should have kept Bosby over Duke Dawson because I watched them both play. That's not a stretch. That's the move that is a real head scratcher. Just like I know Todd Davis is better than Mark Barron, not a debatable thing. That's two defensive position groups that aren't as good as they could be for reasons I don't yet understand. And maybe we won't be talking about any of this in a couple weeks. Now, some traditions are worth keeping. 
And the annual cutting of quarterback Brett Rippon has happened for the second year in a row, leaving Jeff Driscoll as the sole backup to Drew Locke. An interesting move, as Jeff Driscoll has no soul. But that's also what makes him a solid number two. Speaking of solid number twos, Jake Butt made the final 53-man roster. The Broncos had to release tight end Troy Fumagalli because for the first time since Julius Thomas was around, there is great depth at that position. I'm curious to see how Pat Shermer utilizes Noah Fant, Nick Vanette, Albert, oh yeah, who already has a great connection with Horsecock Lock, and yes, Jake Butt, who made the final roster after finally recovering from his 63rd ACL tear. He should be good to go, as both ACLs are now made from steel wire, the same kind tightrope walkers use to perfect the most useless skill on earth. Now getting Butt and Chubb back makes me happy for so many inappropriate reasons. Butt battled through the darkness to emerge solid, rejuvenated, and is a good tight end if his knees can just hold up for a season. This Butt's open for business. This Butt's ready to run. This Butt is hungry. So why wait? Make a Snickers with this butt. Thanks for watching That's Good Broncos. Again, please subscribe to the That's Good Broncos YouTube channel if you're looking for extra delicious, sultry, titillizing, tantalizing, jumanjizing, body juicy Broncos coverage.